Hello and welcome to this new episode of Sotoral Talks. Today we're going to speak about champagne. Champagne is a magic word because um, it makes people dream all around the world, specifically when you, you don't live in France. And for that, we have the pleasure today to receive Eric Georges from the house of Forger Brimont. Hello, Eric. Welcome in the Sotorial Talks Hello. episode. Thank you. And um, we wanted to invite Eric. Why? Because as you can immediately notice, champagne is not directly the subject or the kind of topic that we speak about in Sotorial Talks because you know we are mainly, if not only, focused on men's style, men's elegant. But many people among our viewers, specifically in the USA, you are asking us and you want to know more about this uh, magical um, drink. You know, champagne is not like a normal wine. First of all, it had bubbles in it and it's part of the image of France. You know that you don't have the right to call anything champagne. Eric is going to explain this to us. So this is why today I suggest we're not going to have the time to tell you everything about champagne, but we're going to tell you, we're going to try to share with you ideas, concepts, manners, and all that, I would say, the basic you need to know to know how to buy correctly champagne, to know to appreciate it, and to know how to drink it, and to know how to share it. Thank you, Eric. I would like, um, so as I said, it's from the house of Forger Brimont, beautiful house of champagne, artisanal champagne. Um, uh, these people are um, um, distributing only Premier Cru and Grand Cru. He will explain to us what it means. So this is kind of a high level place, and we're happy to have you. So I'll let you introduce yourself. Who are you? How old are you? What do you do in life? What, what, and, and tell us a little bit about Okay, so thank you, uh, Hugo. Uh, hello to everybody at uh, Parisian Gentleman looking at us. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for having me and having us at Forge Brimont. We follow your, your work at Parisian Gentleman for many years now. Mm -hmm. So it's an thank honor you. to be here on the other side of the screen and uh, to talk about uh, what is gathering us today, Champagne. So my name is Eric Georges. From, uh, I was born in Reims. All my family has been uh, based in Reims for since the Middle Age, I have mm -hmm. two types of ancestors. The ones were working in the cellars mm -hmm. as a remueur, shaking the bottles, and some were working on the Rims Cathedral, on the, on the stone. Mm -hmm. So we are an old family from, uh, from Champagne, and uh, I'm says responsible of Champagne Forger Brimont. We are a familial, artisanal winery of Champagne, and uh, maybe first you, you want me to, uh, to explain basic lines about Champagne to understand it, yes. where it is located, yes. what makes it uh, different to the others, uh, mm -hmm. and, and then I introduce Forger Brimont. Yes. So Champagne area, it's this area in the northeast of France. Uh, basically, you can, uh, a Champagne wine, it is, a, it is a sparkling wine coming from this area. Okay. And what makes Champagne different is that it is a wine with two fermentation. The first one, you, you transform a uh, grape juice into a steel wine. Yes. And then you transform a steel wine into a sparkling wine in the bottle. That is the Champagne method. Okay. When this method is done in Champagne area, then this is a Champagne wine. Yeah. When it's produced outside of Champagne, you yeah. can find it in Alsace, mm -hmm. Cremant, or even Burgundy. In Bourgogne, yeah, You've, right there. It is Cremant Bourgogne, but mm -hmm. it is not a Champagne. Okay, but what uh, am, am I wrong? But I've seen that, you know, that with Sonia we travel a lot. Yeah. And sometimes we see, um, I, I, I don't want to, if I remember well, I see something like British Champagne or people start to use the name Champagne with other breweries. Is it legal? Normally? It, is, it is illegal. No, it's forbidden. In fact, in Champagne we have our own government of okay. the appellation called yes. the CIVC, okay. CIVC in French. Mm -hmm. uh, and the CIVC controls the appellation and he's having a look on what people uh, are doing in the, in the world. For okay. example, Apple, they did a uh, telephone uh, with, with the color, uh, gold color, Champagne color. Yes. And the CIVC had a, well, they went into the court and the CIVC won, so Apple could not use the term champagne. So champagne is very restrict, is uh, very controlled. You can't mm -hmm. do whatever you want with the term of champagne, only mm -hmm. sparkling wine from the area champagne. Okay, only. and from your experience, you never, you never found any um, kind of sparkling wine in other countries that really tastes like champagne? Honestly, I'm sorry, that's a difficult question, it, it, I know, because you can have beautiful Prosecco. Honestly, yeah. honestly it, is, it, is, uh, it is sometimes, it can be tricky. 
Uh, you can find some beautiful French Accorta yes. in Italy because the French Accorta is an appellation in Italy. I think it's in Lombardia mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or Piemonte mm -hmm, or in mm -hmm. between. North of Italy. From, yeah. yeah, north of Italy. And they use the method Champenoise. So it, it is the exact same process as we have in Champagne, but in this particular region of Italy. Okay. It creates a sparkling wine, very interesting. It's not very famous because the guys in French Accorta, they are taken between two massive appellations. Champagne and Prosecco. Yes. And then I will make the difference between Champagne and Prosecco. Yeah, do it so, now. Do it now. The okay. difference between Champagne and Prosecco. Okay, basically Champagne, uh, it's a sparkling wine with two fermentations. First one in steel vat or in oak barrel and second fermentation to transform the steel wine into a sparkling wine in the bottle. Directly in the bottle. Directly in the bottle. Okay. Prosecco, they are producing a sparkling wine but they are doing the second fermentation in big steel vat. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's absolutely not the same process. Yes. The time, the time it takes to produce a bottle is way shorter. Okay. Um, and I, I don't like to say bad things. I think there is a place for everybody. Of course. So you have some very, very good Prosecco. Yeah. But just there is a distinction between the way we produce Champagne yeah. with a second fermentation in the bottle that is Personally, I believe more precise, mm -hmm. and you have the prosecco with a, with larger volumes, and then mm -hmm. yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's coming back to Forger Brimont. Um, so, um, um, so if I'm right, the winemaker today is still somebody from the Forger family, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. it's totally a family com company. It is absolutely family-owned winery. Yes. It's we are absolute artisanal. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, we are farmers hein, actually. Uh, if you guys have the opportunity of coming at the winery, that would be a pleasure to mm -hmm. receive you. You can yes. directly contact us. Yes. Um, and you can see it's an old building, it's a farm, because Champagne is quite, be has become glamorous in the last 40, 60 years, let's say after the Second World War. Yes. But before, the, the winemakers and the, the, and the wine growers in Champagne, it was very simple. Huh? Uh, it was farmed and we were not making a lot of money with it. So usually a uh, people who had uh, vineyards, they used to have also agriculture. Yeah. Uh, they were producing some fruits. And so it's, yeah, it's a very traditional uh, winery. You right. say that the glamorous, the glamorous, sorry, of Champagne and all this image around Champagne, this image of partying, yeah. of solemnity of you open a bottle of champagne for great occasion it's a fairly new phenomenon it's, but the thing is in champagne we've been in champagne area I yeah mean, because it's an old area champagne it's like new york state in, yes. in, in, the, in america it's the name of an area of an mm. old area we've been having vineyards since like for 2000 years mm -hmm. so we've always been producing wines but until the 19th century it yeah. was still wine Okay. It was not sparkling. Okay. It was not sparkling. In fact, nobody from a day to another invented champagne. It's a succession of invention mm -hmm. and of contribution throughout a th like thousand years. Mm. And for yeah, for after the um, the industrial revolution, yes. we had the opportunity to control the fermentation and we had more tools to control. Mm. So it's at the, yeah, during the 1920s, 1930s, and then after the Second World War, thanks to the American coming to Europe, that it literally has made a boom yes. in the world. Yes, and then we know that American, I have the luck to, as you know, to live with an American wife. My wife, Sonia, is from America. And anything French in America has a kind of a resonance in people's head. It's funny because sometimes I'm in supermarkets and everything basically is called French. You know why? Because when it's written French, you can sell it a little bit more, a higher price. But I understand the fascination of Americans specifically for Champagne. So tell us a little bit now. So as you said that the Mr. Forger is still doing his Champagne. Absolutely. And as far as I know, you only produce Premier Cru and Grand Cru. So, could you explain? First of all, I don't know how to translate premier cru, grand cru. There's no word in English. There for is that. no word in English. We say cru. A cru. A cru, yeah. a cru it's a village. Okay. In so in Champagne, you have 360 villages. 360? Around. Around 360 oh. villages where yes. you can grow vines. Okay. So those villages are called cru. Okay. So you have non cru, normal cru, mm -hmm. and you have 
Premier cru. First cru. First cru. Which is uh, because the soil and the climate is more. It's, it's quite complex. It's, yeah. uh, it refers to the quality of the ground, the yeah. quality of the climate, yeah. of the wind, of the sun orientation, of many things. Multiple things that are. Uh, that are creating, that are making the quality of a, of a, cru, of okay. a terroir. So you have a normal champagne, then you have the premier cru, then you which have the is cru, a little bit more better. refined, yeah. and then you have grand cru. And then you have grand cru, but now we are talking about the quality of raw material. Yes. Because in fact, to produce a, a, a qualitative champagne, it is exactly the same than producing a qualitative suit. Yeah. We are talking about raw material, and like for, in, I like the way you start Italian gentlemen, because first you start with uh, with the fabrics with the, the mills quality yeah the, the, the fabric the mills fabrics fabric mills yeah eighty percent of the quality of the champagne comes is from the vineyard yes if, if you work well in the vineyard and if you have the good condition yeah. and the good terroir then during the vinification you don't need to do a lot so of you mean that the cru idea uh, normal cru premier cru and grand cru absolutely. refers only to the grapes and to the quality to of the, the soil quality. to the raw material absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So you have 360 villages, you have 40, 47 premier, 44 premier cru yeah. and 17 grand cru, which is the best. Only 17. So Only this, 17. this is specific parcels of land, Absolutely. right, that are identified on the ground. Villages. Okay. Villages. In Burgundy, it's, it's a plot. Yes. In, in Champagne, this is villages. villages. It okay. is villages. What, in which villages is uh, Forge Bremont located? So Forge Bremont, we are based, we're located in Lude. Yes. Uh, there is 15 minutes to Rheims. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a premier cru village. Okay. And you can actually see the Rheims Cathedral from, uh, from oh, our wow. vines. Uh, and we have the chance of having 20 hectares. 20 hectares in Champagne means we are medium size, I would say. Okay. We are not a big, I always say the following things we are big for small and small for big. So we are talking of the quality of the raw material. The raw and, material. and after? Um, champagne is basically, this is why I explain many times to people. People say, well, you know, we have this fashion of natural wine, an unfiltered wine, an undosed champagne, whatever, all this, you know, attitude. But the thing is that champagne, like wine, doesn't grow in nature. Champagne is the meeting, is the gathering of a soil, of a climate, of a grape, and then it's also meeting with the hand of man. And the know-how of men and the expertise of men, and specifically on champagne. So, everybody knows about this champagne. We, we've seen many uh, documentaries on people doing this all day long, doing this with bottle okay. all day long. How do you call this specific step? The riddling. The riddling. Le remuage. In remuage French. in French. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And so you have to do it every day, every week, every month. How, how does it work? Uh, basically, now we are doing it with machines because yes. machines are much more precise than. You the, mean at the? Yeah. 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 Ah, okay. You in can fact, calculate the angle and yeah, the in fact, degree. We we use the human hands yes. when it's strategic. Yeah. But when a machine can makes it better, we use a machine. Of course. Of yeah. course. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so it's Giro palettes, it's in, it's in the, the cellars and it automatically makes 116 degrees yes. uh, every 20 minutes. Every 20 oh, minutes. every 20 minutes? Yeah. Oh, wow. And what's the purpose of this? Is to create... The purpose a... on this, it's, well, it's a bit, far, far, uh, a bit uh, further in yeah. the elaboration of the, the champagne, but it's when you have done the second fermentation, yeah. so you have some yeast mm. in the bottle of and course. you want to take off the yeast so we put the bottle from here. A little bit down. And then yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. go down like this. So we make a rotation in the bottle to and to make it, to put it on point like this. Okay. Then when it's on point, we can do the disgorgement. Okay, disgorgement is when you yeah. remove when the excess. Off. Yeah. Okay, and then this is at, at, at this moment, then after you redose slightly with a little then bit of sugar. A, uh, we put a, 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 depending on the amount of sugar that we add, we make the distinction between non dosé, yeah. extra brut, brut, demi sec, etc. Okay, so uh, this is very important to understand. Uh, it's, uh, so that's the first thing is the way the, the amount of sugar which is added can make it extra dry or extra brut, as we say, which that is to say a champagne without much sugar, to something a little bit more normal, a bit sweeter, yeah. but sweeter champagne, etc. And then that's a second thing that, is a, um, that has an impact on the quality of champagne, which is the grapes. So Absolutely. as far as I know, there are three major grapes for champagne, or three only grapes, or three major no, grapes? 99% of the champagne you will find on the market are composed of three different... Ah, there are three main grape varieties okay. in champagne. Pinot Noir, yes. Chardonnay, yes. like in Burgundy, yes. 
and Pinot Meunier, which is specific to Reims. Pinot Meunier is specific to Champagne okay. area. I think maybe you can find it now in England because now okay. they are having a, a certain interest into producing some sparkling yes. in England. But historically, Pinot Meunier uh, is from Champagne. So three grape variety: Pinot Noir is dark, Pinot Meunier is dark, and Chardonnay is white. Okay. Okay. So, and you also have several. Terroir, several main areas. We, of we say soil, I think, soil. In, in English. Yeah. 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 A bit like in Italy, for example, you have the Napolitan style, you have the Roman style, or the. Are you mean on suiting? Absolutely. Yeah. In Champagne, this is exactly the same. We have um, four main sub areas. Okay. Each area is specif uh, specified into a certain type of Champagne. Okay. For example, the Montagne de Reims, where we are located, are yes. much more speci specified into Pinot Noir. We okay. also have a bit of Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay, yeah. but we are much more at Pinot Noir area. A Pinot Noir Champagne makes it a li little bit more... Stru Pinot Noir gives the structure, the red fruits, aromas that you can have, a bit of body the Pinot Noir gives. Mm -hmm. The Pinot mm -hmm. Meunier gives, so it's a dark red, the Pinot Meunier gives a be beautiful fruit, yeah. a beautiful roundness. Mm -hmm. And the Chardonnay, the only white grape variety of Champagne, and that's the reason why when we drink a 100% Chardonnay Champagne, it's called Blanc de Blanc. White of white. It's a white of white. It's a yeah. white juice from a white grape. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Chardonnay gives a beautiful acidity. When we say acidity in Champagne, it's positive. Mm. It's the freshness. Uh, the acidity makes a wine elegant. Okay. So three grape variety, three uh, main zones, three main areas. So it tells you something is that I sh maybe I should not say that, but well, uh, right, so go ahead. Uh, That's a free speech here. Abs absolutely, yeah. um, there is no better champagne. It depends on what you like. It's ex exactly like the like for the suit, like for. Mm. Uh, it, That's do, right. Do you prefer English tailoring, yeah. French tailoring, Italian, yeah. Napolitan, Rome? It's exactly the same. Mm. So that's the reason why I always say the following thing, try multiple things. Yeah. Try some winemakers that are from Montagne de Reims, try some people from Côte des Blancs, yeah. try some winemakers from Vallée de la Marne, try multiple things and do your own idea mm -hmm. and see what you prefer. That's If you had important. to describe for Gébrimont, let's say the, um, the current champagne, I don't know if you can say current because your current champagne is a premier cru, so even your, your entry level is already a premier cru. If you had to describe the personality of this house, what would you say? So, Forge Brimont, so 100% uh, independent yeah. winemaker, for, and we have a know how that comes back from seven generations in okay. the beginning of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So, um, it is a quite smooth feminine, easy drinking style of Champagne. Okay. The reason why is that our ground, the soil that we have in our village, in our area, is quite a soft and delicate type of ground. So in fact, the, the, the vine has been planted on a ground that is quite soft. Okay. And you find this, everything, it's like a circle. You yes. find everything, nothing is lost. Okay. And you find this smooth, feminine, round style Into the, final, into the final wine. Mm. So this is for the ground. Now for the first fermentation, transforming the grape, the grape juice into a, a still wine, yeah. we only use still vat. Okay. Still vat permits to have a very clean aspect, freshness, crispy. Okay. So round, smooth, clean, and then for the second fermentation, we do it in our traditional cellars. Okay. We are one of the last houses of Champagne to still dig our own cellars at 15 meters on the ground, Gosh. in order yeah. to have the perfect temperature, to have the perfect condition to, uh, for the second fermentation. Okay. So when we do the second fermentation in our cellars, the second fermentation is longer, mm -hmm. and you have two advantages, quality of aromas and fineness of the bubbles. Okay. And at Forge Bremont, you can, you, can, you, you can see it. We, in, will, we will taste in, uh, in front have, of our... We have very world. fine and persistent and subtle uh, bubbles. Okay. So these, all those main rules determine a bit the style of our winery. Mm. Soft, smooth, clean, feminine, very fine bubbles. I have a question that probably fascinates and a lot of people have a question. Why? Okay, we understand this from carbonic gas, or I don't know what you call it, the bubbles. So yeah. Why does it make a... Pssst? Like that. How, what's the reason for that? Because you have pressure into it. You okay. have a lot of pressure. Okay. Can you imagine you have more pressure in a bottle of champagne than in a tire of, oh, wow. of car? Okay. Because this is this is the fact of doing the second fermentation in the bottle. Okay. And this fermentation is imprisoned in the bottle. Okay. So, in fact, doing the 
producing uh, gas carbonic, producing sparkling, yeah. it's very simple in Champagne. We put uh, still wine in a bottle, mm -hmm. we add uh, natural yeast, mm -hmm. and we add sugar, and okay. then we close it. And that's it. The yeast in the contact, that those are batteries, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, the course. yeast in the contact of the wine, they are waking up, yes. and in the contact of the sugar, they are eating it. And this is creating the second fermentation and the pressure. Okay. And that's it. It's very simple. And then we have this beautiful noise that everybody knows. Absolutely. All, everybody knows that when you open a bottle of champagne, it's normally for a good occasion or for with friends. This is what I like in this, and this is why it's part of our culture in France. Normally, a champagne is a happy bottle. Absolutely. You rarely open a bottle of champagne for bad news. No. Or you never. don't open, and you rarely open a bottle of champagne to get drunk, yeah. or unless you're very rich, because it's kind of an expensive um, um, alcohol. So you, you, so it's it's kind of a happy bottle, and I like the way that even the aesthetic of champagne have been. Uh, very interesting. Oh, everybody knows the big browns that, that we know and for the Dom Perignon and all these browns who are very famous, but they put a lot of efforts also on the aesthetic Absolutely. of the bottle because it's a happy wine. It's a Absolutely. wine for great occasions, Is that right? And so now I want to go a little bit further inside, inside all this and um, uh, I have a question. Most of the champagne, I would say probably 90% or 95% of champagne are no, um, they are not come from a specific year. They are um, mixed. How do you say non vintage? That? Non vintage, yeah. This is probably 95%, 99%. Yeah, 99%. That is to say, you buy a, a bottle, and for us French, it's kind of unusual because each time we buy a bottle of wine, we know the year on it. Absolutely. So most of the champagne, so it's, it can be mixed from um, um, harvest from different years, from Absolutely. different. Uh, but how do you decide that? So People don't know how. How all of a sudden you produce this permanent? And I can tell our people this is ex excellent champagne, high level champagne. But how do you maintain this coherence while you mixing? I don't know, great from 2008, from 2012, from 2000, whatever, 17, and with Pinot Meunier, with a, it's a complex. Absolutely. It's chemistry almost, yeah. right? Let's go back to the origin of it. The origin of Champagne is a location. Yeah. We are in the northeast of France, so it's quite cold, actually. It is. So we have a fresh, acidic wine. And throughout the, the years, throughout the centuries, we have realized that the fact of adding some reserve wine permitted to have more balance, okay. more equilibrium. More so you mean it can become rounded, less edgy? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So in fact, in Champagne, the, the real power of the Champagne is the fact of mixing everything. We blend grape varieties and mm -hmm. we blend different vintages because the fact of blending reserve wine permits to contribute to multiple things. First, it permits to have more roundness. Okay. The fact of blending an old wine with a young wine, you have more roundness, you have more, it's more, it is more equilibrate. Uh, you, you, you had also a certain amount of um, complexity. Okay. If you, for example, in, in, our, in, in our Champagne, we use almost nine different vintages to produce a, sing, a single bottle. Oh, wow. Using those nine different vintages permits to add maturity, complexity and uh, richness coming of, uh, from diverse uh, vintages. Okay. So, so that, that's the job of the winemaker to, to, to mix all this and to try and then to... Absolutely. It is chemistry. Champagne, it is positive chemi chemistry. Yeah, of we course. try many things. We blend, you wait, you blend again and you try and that's what we do. So the fact of adding the reserve wine permits to, to uh, have a better balance. Yes. Quality. Permits also when we have a bad harvest to use the, the reserve wine in order uh, to, have, to have a, con a cons uh, consistency in terms of the quantity yeah. uh, and also in terms of price because as you know in some uh, appellation in the world sometimes when they have a bad harvest mm -hmm. the prices are going up because the quality available is very low. Yes. In Champagne the fact of having our reserve wine permits to have a certain consistency on quality mm. and so on price. Yeah. So that's the reason why you will see in shops the price of Champagne are usually very stable. Okay. So reserve and wine is strategic. So coming back now to vintage, as we just said, 99 point, probably 5% of champagnes are non-vintage. It's, it's a mix between harvest, between years, between grapes, between different kinds of things. Uh, but then uh, I think um, the great houses of champagne produce what we call um, um, vintage champagne. That is to say, 
a single harvest mm -hmm. from a single year. Uh, most of the most well-known Champagne Harvey, they don't produce a vintage every year because they say, well, this year was not a great year, so it's, not, um, it's useless to produce a vintage. But you have a different philosophy at Forger Primo. Absolutely. We yeah. have the perception of revealing what nature has given us, okay. uh, no matter what except during very bad harvest. For example, yes. 2017 was not good at all. It was difficult. Here, it was yeah. very difficult indeed. Yeah. But for the rest, we are here, we are simple people trying to reveal what nature is giving us. So uh, we are not here to select whether this year was good or not. Mm -hmm. We just do on our things. We usually do the same blendings. Okay. 50% Pinot Noir, 50% Chardonnay, because those are the two grape varieties that got better in the age. Mm. And then the rest is the nature who has done it. Mm. So in fact, sometimes it's very interesting because sometimes you have a very sunny, a very sunny harvest. Yes. 2005 was extremely sunny, round, quite uh, with a strong perception of, of the sun. 2006 was the absolute opposite. Very fresh, uh, beautiful minerality. 2007 has a strong toasted butter. Uh, so in fact, there is something to say for each harvest. Mm. So at Forge Brimont, we produce a vintage, same blending, but every, every year. And then that is the people who can choose, who can decide what, what they prefer. Okay, and I have a question that will interest a lot of people, I'm sure, well, coming from a professional uh, like you of Champagne and uh, working for such a quality house of Champagne. Um, what are, in your opinion, the five best years of all time in vintage champagne? Or let's say the ten, if you need ten dates, or maybe five, it's fun. What five. Are the, if, if you were giving an advice to the Sotorial Talks public, uh, you, you say, uh, if you see a bottle from, I don't know, 2008, 2005, 19, whatever, what are, in your opinion, according to your experience, you're a young man, but you know yeah. champagne very well, what are the five top years, in your opinion? Is um. it a difficult question? It can. Be, um, it no, depends on the taste. It depends on the taste. But let's say that the five best harvests in the history of Champagne yeah. are, I believe, 1926. We were not born. We were not born. Uh, 1929. Wow. 1945. 1990. 1990. 1990, mm -hmm. and I know you have a son. Yeah, we have one bottle in our Absolutely. cave of 1990 that we wait because you may not know I'm going to be grandfather and, and, and Sonia going to be grandmother for the third time. Uh, we're going to have a, a girl and uh, a, a baby girl. I mean, my son, our son's going to have a baby girl. So um, Eric brought us a, a bottle from the year of birth of my son. It's going to be father for the first time, 1990. So. Because I didn't know we can, it was, we can drink old champagne. Very few people know you can okay. age champagne. That is a fantastic point that you mentioned. Champagne is a fantastic aging wine. Why? Because we are in the north of France, you have acidity in the wine. Yeah. The more you have acidity in the wine, the more the potential of aging is important. So champagne is, okay, it's good for having fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful moment for sharing an aperitif, but it is also a fantastic wine for aging. Please and try it at home, have fun. You take a normal brut or blanc de blanc, uh, let's say a good, a good uh, house from a good winemaker yeah. and you keep a, a simple bottle. You don't need to go for prestige cuvee or two vintages and you forget about it during five, six, seven years minimum. And? And you will have fun. And you will see that the aromas are transforming. Yeah. You will see that it's, yeah, it's, it, Old champagne is something to try. Fantastic potential. So you're saying 26, 29, 45, 1990, and? 2008. You mean this battle? 2008 this battle has the strong potential of being the next big, big thing in the next 20 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Battle of Forger Brimont, 2008. And I don't know, it's, it's fun because it looks very close to our business because there's a kind of a stitching here around the, the label. It looks like a couture cellier, we say in France, which is something that uh, people who are working with leather, they would do this. If there's a, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful. Uh, the, why did you do that? There is a, I draw this, uh, this, uh, this label. Yeah. You know, we are a, a familial and small winery, so everyone is doing a bit uh, everything. Yeah. So I'm in charge of the distribution, but also of the marketing. Okay. And for this one, I renew totally the, the, the packaging mm -hmm. on, the, on the bottle and also on the gift box. Yeah. And 
To be honest, there is a blink of an eye. Can we say that in English? Yeah, it's a yeah. wink, we say. A wink, okay. Like that. A, a wink to a Parisian gentleman. Okay. With this, I wanted to have a proper impression of leather. Okay. Through this uh, metallic uh, label, everything is prepared, is prepared by hands. Mm -hmm. Our team are preparing it wearing gloves. Okay. In, a, in a silk. Yes, in silk, silk yeah, glove, yeah. To prepare each and every button. Okay. So 2008, fantastic harvest, fantastic potential of aging. Yes. What makes a harvest unique and has with a strong capacity of aging mm -hmm. is the, it's like in agriculture, in fact. Uh, a good weather is a weather that does not last. Okay. So 2008 has something is that you had a bit of wind, a bit of dryness, a bit of rain. Yes. A bit, and, a, and then this all year long. This creates the perfect condition to have the perfect equilibrium. equilibrium. Mm -hmm. okay. That makes 2008. Impressive uh, freshness, yeah. impressive amount of acidity, so the potential of aging. This, mm. this, this champagne is 12 years old, you can keep it 20 years if you want, oh, even, wow. even more. So, you say to the people if they, for example, if they want to acquire champagne from 2000, how many bottles of, 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 of 2008 did you produce? 5,000. 5,000, that, yeah, not much. No, that's, yeah, that's not, not much. much. Small yeah. quantities. Yeah, no, so, if people want to have it, they can, uh, we're going to put the, the address on the screen. Uh, Forger Brimont is mostly distributed in high level restaurants and with uh, agents and everything, but exceptionally for people from Sartorial Talk, if you want to, uh, to have a few bottles, you can always write on this address on the and ask Eric. Okay, we're not here to sell you champagne, no. that's not the spirit, but well, if you want to acquire champagne from Georges Brimont, you just have to drop a mail. We don't do this very formally, but uh, believe me, that's a very, very good champagne. So this ends the first part of our discussion with uh, Eric Georges about champagne. We will be back in the next episode of the Total Talks, and guess what? We're going to open a bottle. Literally, cheers. <laughs>